Hi, I'm Alyssa LeBlanc with Track Machine Tools, and I'm here with someone you all know, Tracking Pat. Hey, Alyssa. Today we're in Torrance, California at a company called 3DO. They're an award-winning design, engineering, and manufacturing company that specializes in very complex 3D metal printed parts. I am really excited to see the state-of-the-art 3D printing facility. 3DO has been a customer of Track Machine Tools for many years, but today I'm really excited to see how they combine 3D printing along with track machining. We'll find out inside, let's go. I can't wait. How would you describe the market for 3D metal printing? You know, it, it, the market's pretty vast, so we spread out in a number of different industries. Can you tell me about some of your customers? Sure. Uh, there's a company called Lace by Jenny Wu. So she's actually a 3D printing pioneer. All of her jewelry pieces, they're very high end, they're all 3D printed. We just ended up working with her on um, her first ever chain link bracelet that has no clasps, no pins, nothing. And every piece links together. It's all fully 3D printed on our process. And then another customer that we talk a lot about, we have a case study on the website about is a ball return tube. The customer came to us, they couldn't figure out how um, they could continue making it. The original method they had became obsolete and it couldn't be made in any other process and keep um, really the quality that they needed. So who came up with the initial idea of 3DO and Startup Company? Two of us, Paymon, our CTO, and myself were uh, lab mates at USC when we graduated from USC to continue on and try to start a company, something new, something that could change the industry. And where is 3DO on their journey? We are convincing customers organically, one at a time, that 3D printing is a tool of the future to be able to help them achieve performance goals, to help them achieve things that, that they couldn't otherwise achieve with traditional tools. And what is your vision for how 3DO affects the future of manufacturing? 3D printing in general is a really great tool in the tool chest. New tools like metal 3D printing tools will enable customers in ways that, that they really haven't been able to do things before. And so we will fit in in some ways and in some ways we'll extend our customers' capabilities. What differentiates you from other 3D printing service providers? Besides the fact that we are doing high volume production in 3D printing, we've taken a step back and realized that a lot of our customers need help in design for additive manufacturing. And so we actually go to great lengths to help our customers not only understand design for manufacturing, but we also do design for additive manufacturing for our customers to enable them. What is the manufacturing cloud? What does that mean? For us, it was important to get metal 3D printing to production. Uh, that was what we perceived to be kind of the biggest problem with metal 3D printing is that Everybody did prototypes for decades, and um, no one really had the secret sauce to get to continuous production. And so for us, what that really meant was that um, we had to develop an understanding first that the 3D printer itself was just one piece of the puzzle. That everything from raw materials development to printing, uh, the printer itself and the process, to part handling, to sintering, even to how you qualify parts was all a part of the magic of getting parts to production. And so we wrap all of those processes in um, an umbrella software that we call Jarvis. And um, we refer, refer to all of that as the manufacturing cloud. Hey Matt, you know, it's been said that it takes a whole factory actually to do 3D printing, but can you kind of explain to me what that process is and what all that means? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you're absolutely right. It does take a whole factory. We generally start with printing, then we move out to what we call breakout and depowdering. We move over to sintering, and then after sintering, uh, there may be post-processing, and then finally quality control. So can you show me a little bit of those bits and pieces so that we can understand it a little bit better? We'd love to. Should we start printing? Sounds great to me. All right. 
Welcome to 3D printing. Wow, very impressive. These are top of the line machines. They are all connected to what we call the manufacturing cloud and data cables. And the heart of our 3D printing of making metal parts goes on in this room. Very cool. So what is it that actually differentiates you guys from other people who do 3D printing of metal? At the highest level, uh, our surface finish, uh, our general material properties and consistency of material, uh, that's really what differentiates us. And then the consistency of parts coming out in high throughput. Okay, very cool. So then the next part we're gonna review is what? So from here, uh, these machines build blocks of parts entrapped in what we call cakes. And we're gonna go watch breakout of parts from those cakes next. And so in some part of that, you'll actually be able to kind of describe what you mean by a cake? Absolutely. All right, cool. Well, let's go see that. Let's go. So Matt, what is this part of the process called? So when we're done with printing, we end up with what we call green parts. Green parts are another way of saying that we have glue uh, and we have metal powder stuck together. And so we need to now separate these green parts from the rest of the bill. And that's what's going on here in breakout and depowdering. Okay, so then this piece you handed me here, this is part of the negative that it gets thrown away or becomes a waste, is that correct? That's right. And because this hasn't been sintered, you can actually just break it like a chalk. in your hand, that's right. It's basically pretty simple. Okay, very cool. And then I noticed what she was doing over there was basically just doing the separation, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So we, we print all parts so that they can be vertically broken out through the cake. And we do that with the purpose of automation in mind for future okay. concepts. Makes sense. Okay, so what's next? Next is centering, shall we? Right. Let's go. This is where all the magic and centering happens. So we take our green parts, we put them into a centering furnace. It goes under vacuum and hydrogen. It goes up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit at its peak, and it shrinks and consolidates that metal powder into a solid metal part. After the furnace is complete, when the parts come out, uh, they're just as good as any other metal parts that you're used to. So is there, um, I mean, there's gotta be a tolerance somehow in how much the product shrinks during this process. So you have to take that into consideration by what size you make it in the first place, is that correct? That's right, we call that a scale factor in the 3D printing world. And we scale in X, Y, and Z, depending on what we see empirically out of the furnace. And that changes by the type of material you're printing as well? It does, it does. Very, very interesting. So where's this cold contraption made? Uh, this is made in the good old USA, actually. We're, we're really it. proud to, to purchase from American manufacturers in general. Um, as we are an American manufacturer. And us as well, and we really like to hear that kind of stuff, so that's really cool. So here I'm with Marty now, and he's gonna to explain to us how the post-processing part of the system works. So take it away. Okay, so once we finish the parts, um, it comes out of center in, and then we have a fully densified part it's made exactly to the specifications that we set up in our printing area. If we have a tolerance that's tighter than we can print, for instance, we print about plus or minus three thousandths per inch. If we have something that's tighter, maybe it has to be plus or minus one thousand per inch, a hole, or it has to be a press fit, or it needs to be exact. Then we'll take it over to the machine shop and we'll actually drill those holes into the completed part. So we use the equipment over here we use the, the Prototrack uh, bed mills, and we also have a two-out machine that we do, plus some machine centers. And we use those machines to create that um, specification that's required if it's a little tighter, and also to cut off anything that we might have put on the part in order to make sure it stays in, within specification once we center it. So it's a little bit more like kind of a secondary operations that can't be done in the printing process. That's correct. It's really meant to augment the whole printing process and allow us to produce parts that might not be able to be fully printed, but it gives us a, a hybrid approach where we can turn that part into meeting its specification or beating it in a lot of cases, we're utilizing the machine centers after printing. Very cool, so can we take a little closer look in there then? Absolutely. So here we are more into the machine shop. So this is my favorite part of the tour because this is where we get to talk about Prototrax. But more importantly, we want you to talk about what you actually use them for as your part of the process. The Prototrack uh, bed mills are a really good machine for us. They offer the flexibility of being able to handle a part per part. 
and you can also do automation on it. If we want to just drill some holes to clean up a, a part to make it actually meet the specification or take the parts off it. So we can have, use much uh, flexible tooling here in order to hold the parts and we get the flexibility of creating one, making sure that it's perfect and then automating it for all the rest of the parts. These machines are also great for building tooling. We use all these machines to build all the tools that we need throughout our process. And so it kind of doubles as a tooling shop to make all the custom tools we want. Plus we can use it as a hybrid portion to optimize the performance of our parts and meet really, really tight customer specifications. Just like uh, traditional manufacturing, we also have quality control. So here we're doing dimensional tolerances, we're doing visual inspection, um, and anything else that's needed uh, per the customer requirements. So like if during the process, you get all the way to this point before you realize that maybe there's some adjustment that has to be made that goes back to the way in the beginning? We have different quality control points at every station. Um, really what gets caught here is dimensional and final visual inspection. Okay, very cool. So then from here, it's a completed product and ready to go to the customer? Ready to ship. Awesome. Well, hey, I really appreciate the tour. Hopefully everybody else has learned a lot from this as well, but I know I certainly learned a lot. So Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yep, keep on tracking. Thank you. For someone that doesn't know a lot about 3D printing, that was an incredibly interesting show. Yeah, I agree. You know, I would even say for someone like myself who does know a bit about this stuff, I was still thoroughly impressed. It doesn't replace metal cutting and actually makes small shop machining even more essential. There's plenty of room for metal cutting, believe me. Truth of the matter is, the most efficient way is the right way to do this kind of stuff. And you can never be more efficient when you're doing small lot machining than when you use a prototype. You got that right. Well, I guess all that's left is to say thank you very much for watching, and as always, keep, keep on tracking! That was perfect! <laughs> <laughs>